Hi everyone and welcome to our ECG course from zero to hero in acute coronary syndrome. This is Hisham Ibrahim, I'm one of the emergency medicine consultants in United Kingdom. And in this talk, we're going to be talking about some indications to activate the cath lab and when to do it appropriately and when it's going to be considered a little bit of an inappropriate indication to do that. So let's move on and see uh, what we can come up with in this talk. So let's use our normal way and uh, go through some cases and let's see what you will think about these ones. So our first case is a 71 year old male patient presented to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain and shortness of breath. He was found to be in pulmonary edema with low blood pressure, intermittent runs of non-sustained VTs, ventricular tachycardia with raised troponin and um, he has had had 12 lead ECG and it showed no STEMI. So again, you've got a patient who's coming with a cardiac sounding chest pain, pulmonary edema, non-sustained VTs, low blood pressure, high troponin, no STEMI in the ECG. The question is, do you think that this patient would qualify for immediate PCI in your hospital? Think about that while we are talking about it. So what we're going to talk about is PCI, immediate PCI for non-STEMIs. What we're going to use as a guidance is going to be the European Society of Cardiology Guidelines uh, 2020 that was actually published in 2021, talking about the management of acute coronary syndrome in patient presenting without persistent ST elevation. So in this guidelines, there were plenty of useful things, uh, but this is one of the most useful um, flow charts that I've seen there. So this is a flow chart that talks about the uh, selection of non-ST elevation acute coronary syndrome treatment strategies and the timing. This is approved by Oxford University Press and the European Society of Cardiology. So here's the flow chart. And actually, if you follow it, so we start from the top end as we've got some cardiac sounding chest pain so we've got some symptoms here and then you either go to a pci center or a non-pci center and then they risk stratify the patients that is the first step risk stratification or risk identification to either uh, very high risk high risk or low risk let's focus on the pci center risk stratification one it's the same risk stratification but we're just going to see the actions needed and the treatment strategies in this limb so if you're classified as very high risk then you get an immediate pci if you're classified as just high risk not very high then you get a nearly invasive therapy but means in less than 24 hours so immediate PCI happens in less than two hours if you've got very high risk. So let's go through the very high risk and see what is included there. So this is what they talked about when they talked about the very high risk. And they said an immediate invasive strategy less than two hours is recommended in patients with at least one of the following very high risk criteria. So first one, hemodynamic instability. So if, the patient, if your patient is hemodynamically unstable, that is an indication to go immediately to the cath lab. So recurrent or refractory chest pain despite medical treatment. So you're giving the maximum medical treatment and the patient is still having cardiac sounding chest pain. Any life-threatening arrhythmias that keeps happening, then medical treatment is going to be enough and you'll need to go immediately to the cath lab. And mechanical complications of MI, heart failure, that is related to the non-STEMI and uh, presence of ST segment depression uh, in addition to ST elevation in AVR actually. So we've talked about the ST elevation in AVR before and that is another, um, another part of another guideline that um, confirms the need of ST elevation in AVR uh, in addition to ST depression and the other leads to go immediately to the cath lab. So that is another evidence to support the value of ST elevation and AVR that we've already covered before. So if we apply this to our patient, our patient has had 
hemodynamic instability in the form of a low blood pressure and the patient has had um, life-threatening arrhythmias in the form of uh, recurrent VT episodes and the patient has had heart failure secondary to the non-STEMI and by the way the evidence on this is a class 1c evidence so fairly high level of evidence to recommend the early invasive therapy so how about the Americans so the American College of Cardiology published this uh, document to support the guidance that came from the European Society of Cardiology and to acknowledge uh, this and that was in August 2020 so in this guidance they said the following so immediate invasive angio is required in highly unstable patients in the form of either hemodynamic instability or arrhythmias or acute heart failure or persistent chest pain so for those ones you go for immediate invasive angio which means in less than two hours in the European definition so let's go back to our case and let's uh, let's revisit it again so our case was about a 71 year old male patient presented to ED with a cardiac sounding chest pain and shortness of breath and the patient was found to be in pulmonary edema with low blood pressure intermittent runs of non-sustained VTs and raised troponin the ECG showed no STEMI so the question that we asked ourselves in the beginning was would this patient you think gonna qualify for immediate PCI in your local hospital the answer after knowing what we've gone through now should be yes this patient is hemodynamically unstable electrically unstable with what we think is non-STEMI this patient should go straight to the cath lab for an immediate PCI within less than two hours so that was the answer for the first case and we're going to move on to our next one